we got a lot of questions on our first video, which was a reveal of our um, cargo trailer. I thought we could go over some of the questions that were asked. Um, a lot of the same questions were asked over and over. So I'm here with my partner in crime. Are you ready? I'm ready. One of the big questions was holding tanks, of course, because this is not a regular RV. Regular RVs have holding tanks already in them, and this is a landscape trailer, so it had nothing. So a lot of people want to know what we did about holding tanks or what we are going to do about holding tanks. Okay, so there's no holding tanks in the trailer right now. They're, um, definitely not a freshwater tank. Um, we use city water whenever we go or we don't use water. Um, as for the toilet and the shower, we don't have a gray tank or a black tank. We're using a portable tank for dumping your trailer. Um, we did it for two weeks just recently. We went away. I'd say half the time we didn't have a full hookup and we just drain everything into the blue tank and go to the dump station. Worked great. Uh, a lot of people said, well, you got to have a holding tank. We didn't need a holding tank because even if we would have had the holding tank, I would have had to drain it into the big blue tank, the portable tank, to take it to the dump station. So it really wasn't a problem. And um, what's some of the reasons why we don't have holding tanks? We had talked about doing it. Part of the problem is we put the bathroom in the front, and the way the frame is designed, coming back from the tongue, I couldn't get the tanks up underneath. And the cargo trailer is too low to the ground just to mount the tanks. Um, if we flip the axles and raise the trailer up, I could probably fit tanks, possibility someday, but I don't even know if we'll do that. It just depends on what works for us. But right now, we just go straight into the blue tank, into the holding tank next to it when we don't have a full hookup, and we haven't had any problems. Okay, so maybe we should say, t say a little bit about the trailer. Sure. You, I'll let you do that. It's 7x16. It's really 18 with the V because it's a V nose, but the square part of it is 7x16. Seven, 7 foot ceiling. Uh, we, we had that put in, so we had a little more headroom. Uh, covered wagon built it. It's um, metal framed. We had paid extra for the heavier gauge siding and roof, so that gave us a little bit more structure or maybe protection. Windows, doors. Yeah, we had the windows and doors put in from the factory, which is better because they weld in around where the windows are going to be. There's there's steel all the way around the window, so that makes it a little bit sturdier. Another question I've been getting a lot in the Facebook groups and on the video on YouTube is what the weight of the trailer is because you're taking this empty trailer and you're putting all this stuff into it. And people want to know, naturally, what it weighs. One million pounds. Yes. Okay, not quite. Um, we just weighed the trailer recently while we were out. Um, it's a little more than I thought. Um, it weighs 5,000 pounds. Um, I don't have 100% on what the tongue weight is yet either. But the trailer's rated at 7,000 total on the axles, so if we have 5,000, not counting the tongue weight, we're fine. A lot of cargo trailer conversions don't have bathrooms or showers, and we're lucky enough to have a shower. But a lot of people want to know how our shower was made, because it's in the Venos, obviously, and we couldn't just go and buy a pre-made uh, Enclosure. Enclosure, like you could get at Home Depot or at Lowe's. So they want to know how we made our shower. So what we did is on the floor, we put down the concrete backer board, the hardy board, and put that down, and then I brought it up three inches. It's all glued together with construction adhesive, and that's what the bottom is. The walls are plywood. Um, I covered all the plywood with a, uh, it's called Red Guard, it's a vinyl membrane, 
and put a bunch of coats of that on the whole thing. Um, then we put the metal on a wall, glued the metal to the, vi to the membrane, brought the metal all the way down to overlap the concrete backer board. Then we coated the very bottom with the floor, the floor with a bed liner from a truck. Do not use spray on bed liner. It, it, the overspray goes everywhere. You have to use a roll on. We put a couple coats of that and then we built out of um, Ippy or Brazilian walnut. Ipe, I've been, I've been corrected. Ipe. Ipe, Ippy. It's hard wood <laughs> on the bottom. Cheaper than teak. Um, put that as a mat in the bottom that we can pick up and clean the shower out. And it's been working great so far. No leaks that we can see. So, and, and with that, they want to know where the water drains when the shower, when we have the shower on. Just a regular floor drain goes out the bottom. Uh, we have a P-trap underneath the trailer. So obviously, we're not going to do any winter camping with this because it would freeze. But the P-trap comes out, it's tied into the vent that goes through the roof of the trailer, and it goes over to the main water, to the main sewer line where the kitchen sink and the toilet are, and it all goes into the... Uh, either into the full hookup or into that blue tank we were talking about, the portable one. Okay. So speaking of the bathroom, we'll stay there. What, what are the dimensions? People want to know what the dimensions of our bathroom is. So the overall dimension of the trailer, is, of, the, of the bathroom, is about 5 foot by 5 foot. But then you have to subtract, the, you know, the V in the front clips the one corner, and we have a closet in there, the toilet, and the shower. So... And we're working, only working with a, about 100 square feet. Right. So I, I don't think you can really tell by the pictures how very tight this space is. So it's really... It's uh, tight. It, it's very tight. Let's get to some of the other questions that were asked on the, on the well, video. One of the big ones is, how much did it cost? Yeah, that's so. a that's a big question. Now I don't know to the penny what it costs, but we spent between roughly ten, twelve, thirteen thousand on the whole thing, um, not including our truck. Uh, the trailer was about forty five hundred, and the rest was spent on all the materials that went into building this. We tried to budget where we could. Um, and try but didn't skimp like we bought a good air conditioner and we but we only bought a dorm refrigerator we got a deal on the the countertop so we tried to do budget fixes wherever we could and it ended up between 10 12 13,000 for the whole thing a lot cheaper than the brand new trailer and we got what we want. And we got what we want. Everything's where you want it. Yeah. You know. And what about paint? Uh, the paint color. I did all the painting. The walls, actually, everything that is white is Benjamin Moore uh, White Dove. I've used it in my, our houses. It's a soft white paint. I like it in here because it really op makes the space feel more open than it is. So Benjamin Moore, White Dove. And then the windows. The window coverings are a big topic of discussion with everybody. They are. Uh, these are from Flyings.com. They're just woven shades with a black outlining. That's it. Does the job. Does the job. Gets the and job. they add, it adds a little bit of texture into the white, all white space. I know a good question that I really enjoyed. Some questions I don't, some, some comments I don't enjoy, but this comment I really enjoyed. Someone asked us, actually I've, I got it a couple times in Facebook groups too. Someone asked us what we would have done differently, which I think is a great question. That is a good question. So what, what would you have done differently? I'd probably do something different with the air conditioner. Okay. I, I don't know what, mm. but the air conditioner is definitely always on your mind. It works good. It's a dual hose air conditioner. 
which we tried the single hose, wasn't going to work. You've got to get a dual hose air conditioner, otherwise it's not going to keep up. Um, the problem is it short cycles a little bit if the temperature drops because it's, it doesn't have to run long. It's not a big trailer. So when it short cycles, it stops pulling the moisture out of the air. So you've got to be real careful on what's going on. If it's hot, no problem. It works good. But I don't know that there's a good solution even in a regular trailer. It's, it's, yeah. I have friends that have regular trailers. They fight the same thing, even with the rooftop tr um, air conditioners. Yeah. Mini splits seem to be the way everybody's going, but I don't know how we would have put a mini split in here. That's probably going to be put what up. we use on the next one we build. Right. But Computer. that would be the one thing I would probably change. So what about you? I would have, I wish we would have taken the walls off and insulated. I think insu we should have insulated. The walls we insulated the ceiling when we did the ceiling but i really think we should have taken the time to insulate but that's a big topic of discussion too it is the sides and the walls they get leaks and if you have insulation then you got to worry about it rotting and the way this one's set up is if it gets wet up in the wall there's air from the bottom coming up and it dries out yeah but if you're going cold weather camping, right. it's, it would help right. to have insulation and the floor. But we were away just recently, and it was down to 35 at night. Yeah. And we had a little 1,500-watt ceramic heater sitting in here, toasty, no problem. I, I would have liked, liked the floor to be a little. It's, it's, it's cold on your feet. Right. So that would have been nice. But the only way we're going to do that is a heated floor. Yeah, well, that is... Maybe the next one will have heated floors. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I got everything I wanted, really. So. Okay, my partner in crime. <laughs> now we get to talk about the big question. The one that made the video go wild. Everyone didn't like this part of our conversion. So, it's the toilet. The elephant in the, the room. The elephant in the room, the toilet. It's a toilet. Yes. So I got a lot of comments on the, the first video. Not in any of the Facebook group. No one said anything in the Facebook groups. It was only when I put it on YouTube. So many people so hated the toilet where it is. Um, granted, when you open the door, you can see the toilet. Uh, you know, it, it's a small space. It's a camper. We've camped our whole lives. It didn't really bother me, the person who likes having everything look good. Uh, I, we, I wanted a toilet, and I got a toilet. So let's talk about some of the things that I don't know if people understand about having this toilet in here. Uh, uh, I think... People don't understand we're not using the toilet all the time. We use the toilet mainly at night, night yes. for an emergency. For an emergency. So you don't have to go walking outside at night. Right. It's not like I'm saying get out and making him stand in the rain, which I've heard people say, um, so I could use the toilet. First of all, we have an awning. But um, I, if, if I have to use it, and he's outside, I simply lock the door, and I pull the shade down, and I use it. But it's not something, and it's only the two of us. I think if we had kids or, or whatever, uh, you know, it probably would be more of a problem. But he rarely ever uses it. He walk, he'll walk over to, the, to a bathhouse, but um, it's... It's not been a problem for us. I mean, people are worried about it. Oh, it's so close to the kitchen. There's a wall. We're not eating and using the bathroom or cooking and using the bathroom at the same time. You yeah. know, I, I, I've seen people with vans that have bathrooms in it, and van is half the size of this. And, you know, unless you've camped this way, you would never understand. It's not a normal toilet. It's not like a big high-pressure toilet that you flush and you're getting all this mist coming out of the toilet. Right. It, it doesn't work that way. You can still close the lid. You push a pedal and it, it, it flushes. So the, the, 
the initial plan was to put the toilet in the vinos so that you couldn't see it. Uh, that changed when he went under when you went underneath right and saw the structure and where the beams were right and we just couldn't he just couldn't place wherever we needed to place the toilet there was a beam Is and it was correct? too late at that point because you know we did the ceiling first in the trailer then we put the bed in and we started camping when we first got it we went out we, we took some totes through in the front of the trailer and we started using it so as we built it we used it the whole way and we started from the back and worked forward I knew the bathroom was going to be the biggest job so I waited till the end to do it I don't know that I would have done anything different because I wanted the bed in the back because we got the barn doors and we have all the storage underneath the bed the, the other thing is when I made the video I think I said in the video that we weren't quite done um, when we built the bathroom the original plan, or not the original, once the shower was in and the toilet was in, we didn't finish the wall because we had planned on putting a door. We started using the trailer and decided that the, a door would really close in the space, make it much smaller than it is. And it would keep all the hot air. The hot there. air. So I started working on something to just give me a little bit of privacy when um, that happens that he's in here or that I'm in here and he wants to take a shower and wants a little privacy. So all I did was I put a swing arm up uh, for, I have two shower curtains, a vinyl liner and a cotton um, outer curtain for de decor decoration so I put I just left the liner up and I put a swing arm for the outside curtain the cotton curtain and I just swing it over and I put a little L is that an L sure an L hook, hook in the wall and I, I drilled a little hole in the ball of the end of the swing arm and I just hook it on the wall as you can see me do now and then I, can, I have enough room in there that I can use the bathroom or be in the shower and I don't feel so closed in but I have some privacy and when I'm done I just take it off the L hook and I swing it back and I have another L hook on the shower and I just hook it back on there so it doesn't swing back and forth. And it looks like it was, it hangs on there natural. So we haven't, I've just done this, we haven't been out using it yet. Nope. So I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna work. It probably, um, after being in it this summer and seeing how hot it gets back there, it's probably going to have to stay open most of right. the time, yeah, so yeah. the air will. You're only going to use it when you need a little privacy. Right, but I can put it across now, so when you look in the door, you do not see the toilet first thing. So that'll keep a lot of people happy. I, I hope so. So, <laughs> so uh, I guess that's it. That's the biggest questions asked. If you want to see our first video, you can go back and see the, the video that started all the commotion about the toilet. It's the reveal of the our cargo trailer. Uh, and if you want to read about some of our projects that we did, I didn't do all of them. Uh, you could go to chatfieldcourt.com. And I guess that's it, right? Sounds good to me. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks Thank for sitting you. here with me. And thank you. Bye.